for it TV. The world is thinking. So let's start at my own house, which does not have to look like this in order to work like this. It can look like whatever you want. So I'm in a kind of Manchurian climate, uh, or Tibetan climate perhaps, at 2200 meters elevation where the temperature used to go sometimes to minus 44 Celsius, minus 47 Fahrenheit. You can get frost there any day of the year in the western Colorado Rockies near Aspen. You can get 39 days of continuous cloud in midwinter. And yet if you come into this atrium of 85 square meters out of the snowstorm, there you are in the banana jungle where so far I've harvested 28 banana crops. And then you realize there's no heating system. Why not? Well, I didn't need one, and it was cheaper in construction costs not to put one in. Huh? Well, if you were to ask most engineers how much insulation should you have in a very cold place, probably they'd say, well, just the amount that will pay for itself over the years from the saved heating fuel. This sounds perfectly reasonable. You don't want to pay more than it's worth, do you? But it's methodologically wrong, even though it's in all the textbooks, because it leaves out the capital cost of the heating equipment. And it turned out to be, in 1983, $1,100 cheaper to put in super insulation, super windows, ventilation, heat recovery, passive solar design, than to put in a heating system, even if operating it costs nothing. So I took the $1,100 of saved construction cost plus another $7,100, net cost extra $6,000 or $16 per square meter, and I put it into saving about 99% of the water heating energy, half the water, and 90% of the household electricity. So this 372 square meter building, uh, if I did not use solar electricity but bought it all, would cost about $5 a month for electricity. I know that's a lot, but we can do better now. And the efficiency was all a 10-month payback in 1983.